Hello, and thank you for joining us as we speak with Dr. Brett King, a pioneer in the usage of Janus kinase inhibitors, also known as JAK inhibitors, in various cutaneous diseases, including atopic dermatitis. Welcome, Dr. King, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Excellent. Thank you so much. Let's get started. First question. There are several systemic and biologic agents for treating AD. What are your recommendations for including non-pharmacologic and at-home interventions alongside newer systemic treatments? It's a really good question. And I think it's one that we often forget about um, in our patients who need pharmacologic intervention. We, we, we tend to forget that there's still just the simple care of skin that has to happen at home. And so this includes, uh, you know, appropriate soaps or rather avoidance of inappropriate soaps and then just gentle skincare, moisturizers, et cetera. And so, and so I think, you know, whether we're, managing the mild to moderate atopic with, again, topical pharmacologic therapies, or we're managing the moderate to severe atopic dermatitis patient with systemic therapies, we need to constantly remember that we need gentle skincare at home because nothing that we have right now is completely turning off the disease. And so we need every little bit that we can get to add to make patients better. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. King, for your amazing response. We now have two oral JAK inhibitors, FDA approved for atopic dermatitis that clinicians can add to their toolbox. In your expert opinion, which AD patients are more likely to benefit from treatment with JAK inhibitor therapy? Here, I think it's critically important to highlight the labels for the oral JAK inhibitors. To some degree, the labels tell us the answer to that question. The labels for both abrocitinib and upadacitinib state that they are indicated for the treatment of patients with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis whose disease is not adequately controlled with other systemic drug products, including biologics, or when use of those therapies is inadvisable. I apologize for, for reading the label, but I think it's really important that we all be aware of that. Therefore, the patients with atopic dermatitis that are likely to benefit from treatment with JAK inhibitors are those who have either failed dupilumab or in whom dupilumab is inadvisable. I'm not sure I can think of a patient for whom dupilumab is inadvisable. After all, it is an incredibly safe medicine. And truly needle phobic patients are similarly very rare. Therefore, the oral JAK inhibitor should be used in patients who failed dupilumab, just as the labels say. So now, be, again, being mindful of that, I think it's important to remember that while dupilumab is a truly extraordinary medicine, and indeed it's revolutionized the treatment of patients suffering from atopic dermatitis, there are patients for whom dupilumab does not work at all, or it does not work well enough. I am extremely excited about having the oral JAK inhibitors for these patients. Thank you, Dr. King. So compared to biologics, what are a few key differences that oral JAK inhibitors present regarding efficacy in treating AD? It's a great question and a really important one too for practitioners. JAK inhibitors exhibit impressively fast suppression of pruritus and signs of disease in general compared with dupilumab. While that is true, however, we have to remember that AD is a chronic disease, and so efficacy over two to 16 weeks is not as important as efficacy over months or years. This is not a sprint after all. 
we, we have head-to-head -head data for abrocitinib versus dupilumab and for upadacitinib versus dupilumab, showing that the early differences in efficacy between these JAK inhibitors and dupilumab wash away at weeks 24 to 26. Therefore, again, considering that AD is a chronic, often lifelong disease, I think there are more similarities in efficacy than there are differences, at least at this moment in time. Perfect, thank you, thank you. With all of the recent therapeutic breakthroughs, are there still any unmet needs in managing AD? And if so, what are they? Uh, so, so here I'm going to borrow what we've learned from psoriasis. And that is that there is always room for more therapeutic agents. There is no doubt that with a new highly effective topical JAK inhibitor, ruxolitinib cream, and with the oral JAK inhibitors, abrocitinib and upadacitinib, which are both highly effective therapeutics, we will make huge strides forward in treatment of our patients suffering with this disease. But remember that atopic dermatitis affects millions of people. And without a doubt, all of them are not better right now we need more therapeutics and so so with that i you know i'm just i'm incredibly excited about where we're at i'm incredibly excited about the recent advances in particular with the jack inhibitors but again we need more Absolutely agree. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. King. This was super informative. Is there anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up? You know, for me, this is such, and, and I think for me and for, for everybody in healthcare these days, this is such an exciting time because we are able to translate observations in lab to therapeutic breakthroughs for the people that we are caring for in clinic and so the future is so bright and and we all have this great privilege of being healthcare providers and we should just be excited about the present and the future perfect thank you so much dr king